So we're going to start off making the weave templates and for this you're going to need some crafting card and a thicker piece of card and it's useful to have a sheet of paper as well. So I've got a little plate here and I've drawn round that on my thin card and also on my thick card and you're going to cut those out. It's also useful to do the same on a piece of paper. Next, you're going to find your midpoint of your circle. And a useful way of doing that is with your piece of paper, just fold that in half and in half again. And just snip off. So that gives you your midpoint. On your thin piece of card, you're going to mark out where your midpoint is. Draw a line from the midpoint to the outer circle and a small circle around your midpoint and cut that out. On your thick piece of card, draw nine equally spaced marks around the outside and cut into those to make slots. So I've cut an old t-shirt up into strips of two centimetres wide by 45 centimetres long and I've cut nine of those strips. I'm going to get all the ends together and I'm going to tie those in a knot. Next I'm going to get my thinner card template and I'm going to slot that into where my little hole is. You may need to cut that a little bigger to accommodate your yarn, your t-shirt. Just going to cut that out a little bit and slot that in to the middle. Then I'm going to make this into a cone for my jellyfish body. I'm just going to secure that with a staple and one the other side. And with a bit of sellotape I'm going to smooth that seam. Next with my thick card that I've cut into, I'm going to place that on the top and I'm going to feed each of these into the slots. And pull them tight. So I've chosen the materials that I want for my weave. I've got a plastic bag 
an old tie, a skirt and two t-shirts and I've cut each of those into around about two centimeter widths. So I'm now going to start my weave and with my first piece of material I'm going to pop that under here and just tie that on and bring it up to the top. Because this is a plastic bag, what I'm going to do is I'm going to thread that through the hole in the bottom of my large safety pin for my weave. But when you come to use other materials, then you can simply open the safety pin and pop that through and that secures it for your weave. So I'm just going to tie that on to secure it. So when you come to your weave, I've tied onto this strand here and I'm going to go under, over, under, over and carry on doing that all the way round. Under, over, under, over, under. And pull that up to the top as you go. So I've gone over that one, under, over, under. And with these loose ends, you can just tuck them in so that you can't see them on the top of the weave. And just keep going. When you come to join two pieces of materials together then you can just slip that off, keep your safety pin and with your next piece of material just tie those two ends together. And just snip off the end. And carry on weaving in the same way. When you come to the knot, you can just tuck that in underneath your weave and you won't see it. So I've gone under this one, I'm over this one, under, over. When you've finished weaving, 
and you come to tie off your last piece, just cut that in half and just pull through one half. And on your last strand here, just knot that on. Nice and tight and then snip off the ends. When you come to tie off each of your strands, just cut each strand into two pieces like this and take it off your cardboard template and one end just pop the other side of your last weaving strand across like that and then you're just going to tie that on and don't cut off your strands here, just leave them and you're going to do the same thing all the way for each of your nine strands. So when you've finished tying off all your ends you can then take it off your template and we don't need this one anymore so we can just rip into that. If you want to be able to hang your jellyfish then just pop a little bit of cord through the top here and tie that Then just shape your jellyfish a little bit and there he is. So you can either leave it like that or if you want to you can use some pasta or some beads to thread on to your tentacles to add a little bit of interest. So I'm just going to thread one of the tentacles through my pasta and just pop on a little loose knot to hold that in place. So for the more advanced weave, I've still cut out my two templates out of my thin card and my thicker card and still cut into the middle in the same way. On my thick card, I have cut more grooves in, still an odd number, but more to suit your weave. When you come to cut your yarn to put in your slots, you still want this length here to be round about 45 centimetres. So you've got however many lengths that matches however many slots you've got. But the difference is you cut the one end but you leave the other end looped. We've got an odd one because we've got odd amount of lengths. And then this top bit, you're going to tie a knot in the same way but you are going to leave the loops. And I'll show you why a little bit later. Then the looped end, you slot into your cone template in the same way that you did your other one on the basic weave and we're going to form that dome in the same way and just pop yourself some sellotape down there to smooth that seam. When you've done that in the same way that you did before we're going to pop that over your card, your thick card template and slot these into your grooves. You can either leave your strands free or if you want them out the way, like I've done on this one, you can just tie them loosely out the way to keep that taut.
for when you come to start your weave. So now we're ready for the fun part of the weave and it's collecting the materials that you're going to use. So some things that you might want to gather, you've got cord, bits of wool, string, other bits of cord, embroidery thread, some thick yarn, bits of ribbon, cut off clothing and we've got some trim here as well. Another fun one is to use a zip. So with this zip here, I'm going to open that up and I want to separate the teeth from the cord. So I'm just going to trim along there, close to the teeth of the zip and then I'm going to use that in my weave. So I would just cut all the way up there until I've got separate bits and it adds a bit of interesting texture. So when you come to do your weave, you're going to be starting at the top. So use your thinner pieces of material at the top and then your thicker pieces at the bottom as you come to the wider part. Now, do you remember that I asked you just to cut a little bit in here, not all the way to your other template? And the reason is that it gives you a little bit of a gap so that it makes your weave easier for you. So we're going to start off with a little bit of orange wool. And with your large safety pin, through the hole here, I'm just going to thread that piece of wool. And I'm just going to tie that on to secure it. Next, with the other end, just going to pop that under there and just tie it on and bring it up to the top. I'm using a contrasting colour so that you can see what I'm doing at the top. So I've tied onto this one here and now you can start your weave. It's quite fun to add a few beads as you go along. If you've got any broken bits of jewellery at home, all you do is snip off your safety pin, thread your bead through your cord, and then just add those into the weave as you go along, and then just carry on weaving in the same way. So when you've finished your weave, we're ready to tie off. So what we're going to do is we're going to tie two strands together and we're going to do that all the way around. A little hint here is that if you pull it just a little bit tighter when you come to tie off then you'll end up with a nice little scalloped edge and you do that all the way around because we've got an odd number you'll end up with three at the end and you can just tie those together in the same way so now that you've tied all your ends off you can now get rid of your templates so we don't need this anymore so we can just tear into that and take that away. Next we're going to just put a little cord out the top here. I'm going to put a little bit of a button on there for interest. So I've just doubled over my yarn, pop that through and put that through the centre here and just avoid where your knot is. Pull that through and just tie that off. And that gives you 
the top there. So you could stop there, but if you want to add a few more tentacles, then this is how you do it. Here are some materials that make great tentacles. So we've got some curling ribbon for parcels. We've got some header tape from curtains. We've got a different type of header tape for curtains as well. We've also got some eyelash wool, which makes fantastic tentacles. We've got some trim that naturally curls because it's old. And we're going to use ribbon as well, just plain ribbon. And I'm going to show you how to make that curl if you don't have any of these things. I'll show you how to make a regular piece of ribbon curl like a tentacle. Here I've used white cotton on white ribbon, but I'm going to show you with a contrasting cotton so that you can see what I'm doing. So I've tied a knot in the end of my cotton and I'm simply going to, off centre, I'm going to do a broad running stitch along the length of the ribbon, all the way along. Mine's just a short piece so that you can see the technique. And then I'm just going to pull that so that it crinkles and curls on one side. And what happens is you can make it like a tentacle. When you finish sewing along your ribbon, you just put a little, couple of little stitches in there and snip that off. Curling ribbon makes great tentacles too. You can either use a butter knife or a pair of scissors just to curl that like that. So if you do have any curtain header tape, it's fantastic for making tentacles. Both of these work in the same way. So along the middle, you'll have two lines of thread. And if you draw those together and pull them unevenly then you get some fantastic tentacle formations. Leave these bits at the end because that just adds interest as well. In the same way you can gather this one. But if you don't have any of this then ribbon works just as well. So when we come to attach the tentacles to the main body We'll put those ones aside. With these ones, we've got ends um, at either end. So we can just use these, use these ends to tie onto one of the loops inside. Just to secure that. And the same with this one. We've got two cords here. That we can just tie on to one of the loops. With the smaller pieces of materials you can double them up to the length that you want and just loop that through one of the inside loops. and just tie that securely in place. And you do that for all the different pieces of materials that you want to use as tentacles.